Hello and welcome to When Wagon Wheels Were Bigger, the podcast that's never going to give you up, never going to let you down, never going to run around or desert you, never going to make you cry, never going to say goodbye, never going to tell a lie or hurt you. I'm Mark Palmer. And I'm Martin French. Never going to give, never going to give. <laughs> and this week we are looking at a... Television show, a bit of a stammer there, I apologise. <laughs> a television show from the 80s called Bertha, which was a British stop motion animation from around 1985. Now, what are your memories of this one, Martin, if any? Um, oh, I loved Bertha. Um, I, I'm a bit hesitant to, to do this, actually, because I don't really want to mock it, because this was my favourite of the. Um, well, Ivor Wood was uh, the guy sort of who was behind all of this. And, um, Is that a porn and, name? And Postman Pat. It does sound like a porn <laughs> name. Now you've ruined it forever. Um, Good. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so I suppose his best known uh, creation is probably Postman Pat. Um, yeah. There were several shows sort of along these lines. There was Postman Pat, there was Bertha, there was Charlie Chalk. And they're all this same stop motion style. I'd, but, I'd say that Postman Pat's a different style to this. So Charlie Chalk is, is definitely a similar style because of the um, thyroid eyes <laughs> that, the, that the puppets have. But, but, but not, maybe not the same style then, but that same, um, I don't know, like the model making behind it is all very yeah, intricate yeah. and brilliant. And it's, it's hard to, to pick fault because... Um, I don't know this and Postman Pat. I really loved, and I, and even watching this again, I just enjoyed watching it. I think there's a spoiler for uh, for the end. <laughs> My opinion is I enjoyed it, but well, no, uh, so did I. I mean, yeah. I'd have been around six, six, seven, maybe. So maybe verging on being too old, I guess, to enjoy it. But I do remember watching it. Remember the theme tune. I mean, I think everyone rem- remembers the theme tune. Um, and of course, uh, a lot of the characters voiced by. Uh, friend of the show, dead friend of the show, <laughs> Roy Kinnear. He would, would be a friend of the show if he was still alive. He would be. Sure. Well, let's hope his son Rory Kinnear could be a friend of the show. Oh, yeah, um, that would be nice. He's a good From actor. Skyfall and uh, pig fucking fame from the <laughs> Black Mirror series. Not in real life, obviously, Not in real but life. from the, the series Black Mirror. We, we hasten to add, pig? he has never done that, probably. But we don't know for sure. We so maybe, Rory, if you're sure. listening, <laughs> tweet in to confirm whether you actually done it or not. We know you did. <laughs> um, but yeah, so all, all of the um, the male characters are voiced by Roy Kinnear, um, <laughs> who's desperately trying to do a different voice for every character. And I just imagine him, him in the booth getting confused because at times they sound quite similar. <laughs> I don't know. I think <clears throat> he did a really good job. I think, no, he did a good job, but it's just some of the characters have the only slight differences in how they sound. Yeah, and um, there is an unfortunate, I don't know, I don't know if it's racist, but... Uh, I know what you mean. I was, is, as soon as that character appeared, I thought, oh, God, Roy, Roy not Roy, just, Roy. Yeah, there, there's some, I don't know, we'll talk about it when he appears. Who's the 80s, though? Yeah, it's not, it's not, you know... It's not offensive, but there is I just mean, an inflection. racism was acceptable in the 80s. Yeah. As was sexism. Um, <laughs> basically, everything was fine in the 80s. I don't <laughs> it was think okay. there was... I mean, as soon as the 90s hit, political correctness came in, and uh, everything went mad. And robbed us of Bertha. Lovely robbed Bertha. Of, robbed us of Bertha, uh, the black and white minstrel show. <laughs> <laughs> And all the other horrors that came before it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a show I loved. And like you say, I mean, like, Charlie Chalk was a bit later, so I was a bit too old at that point. But um, I remember my nephew watching it. Yeah. You know, not that much younger than me, really. Um, he was a big fan. Um, well, yeah, Postman Pat. I mean, who didn't watch Postman Pat as a kid? I know. Well, and it's was it still being made now? Are they still doing it? Has it gone CG? Uh, there was a movie, did, wasn't there? There was a movie, which what, you know, what isn't that bad? We mm-hmm. saw it in the cinema. I thought it was all right. Um, the, I don't think it was CG. I think it was just nicer puppets. Okay. Because it had the special delivery service. He kind of got a helicopter. 
See, I um, don't like that. There's something really... Uh, it, watching the old... I mean, we'll probably do a post Mopat episode at some point, but watching the old mm. um, episodes of that and just the way that the van moves, it's so simple. The characters, the sets, everything's so simple but intricate and really nicely made. And you see that with Bertha as well. Bertha herself, uh, the, she's, she's, she's a machine. She's like a factory machine, isn't she? Um, yeah. And all the little moving parts, all the flashing lights, everything on it is so well thought out and, and just looks right. Um, she's got a articulated arms and fingers and they actually mm. move and, and, you know, and all the characters, like I think it's in this one um, where one of the, the packers, it's either Flo or, oh, I can't remember their names, but um, she, she does a little sort of gesture with her fingers, like a nervous gesture. And it's, yeah. it's so like, it, they didn't need to animate it. But it, uh, it just, it's just one of those little details that this is full of. Um, it's, it's just attention to detail. I think uh, it's Ted the foreman, isn't it? At one point, yeah. he's got something in his hand. He's kind of tapping it with his little fingers. Yeah. I think it's just an unnecessary animation piece of animation. Really, it didn't need to do it, but it's just the attention to detail of you know, mannerisms that someone may have. That's in exactly a factory. It. Yeah. Well, no, but it's <laughs> it's it's human. Uh, it, it's what brings them to life, rather than just being puppets. They yeah. all have little nervous ticks or twitches, or or little a little rub of the nose, or you know, they, everything is so well worked out. Yeah, um, no, it's, re it's, it's really good. Um, but there are things to mention as we <laughs> as we go through it. I, I I might be reasonably quiet because I'll probably just be enjoying it. But uh, we'll see how we go. Well, then that will make for an interesting podcast for anyone who does listen. <laughs> yeah, for anyone who just wants to watch Bertha, this is the one for you. Or, you know, just watch Bertha. Just do Quite that. Easier. So this is this is Bertha episode one, The Great Painting Job. Yeah. Um, where we're introduced to all the characters, slowly. And they're making jigsaw puzzles. It's yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting. So are you ready to play? <laughs> I am, whenever you're. Okay. Three, two, one, Bertha. That's a brilliant theme song, isn't it? It is. It's a really nice theme song. I mean, there's Bertha. No, my first, my first issue that I have. It's a minor thing. Mm -hmm. The cogs on the side of Bertha don't actually <laughs> interconnect, so they're kind of pointless. They're not really serving a purpose. And also, as on the outside, they seem to be just for decoration. But, um, but there's nothing wrong with a bit of decoration. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with a bit of decoration. <laughs> um, I mean, I know, obviously, it's colourful and it's for the children, but <laughs> any um, kind of designer watching this would think, well, it's just superfluous to requirements. A lot of this it's... design on the top of Bertha makes me think of, uh, it's a film we mentioned quite often, but uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. There's, yeah. you know, when they go through that uh, that bubble bath thing and just the moving mm. cogs and sprockets and whatever they are, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you mean. I mean, yeah, again, Roy Kinnear. Just the connective tissue between our podcasts. Was he was Roy brilliant, Kinnear. though, Roy Kinnear, wasn't he? I, he I didn't even was. remember that he did the voices for this. No, I didn't. I mean, I, 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 lo I loved Roy Kinnear and everything. I mean, I loved Willy Wonka, but I loved him in the Three Musketeers movies as well, as, which is, he died mm. during this, making the second one, didn't he? Oh, I don't know. Did didn't he? Know that. I, I don't know. Did he fall from a horse? That I know that's Christopher right. Reeve. No, now you say <laughs> it, that does sound right. I think he might have done. See, look, that, that sound effect and the, the way that jigsaw crumpled, that's, something, that's so satisfying to me, just watching the animation and thinking yeah. how clever that is. Do it's you know what I first thought, though? I got what? This factory is very much overstaffed. It is, yeah. When they, they I think what they say, they make, they've made 40 jigsaws that day. Yeah. And I don't that's know not good. I mean, that's, productivity that's not very is, is low. <laughs> they've got too many um, staff members on the floor, on the factory floor. <laughs> and... If birth is such a revolutionary machine, then surely she'd be able to she should be able to pump out more than one puzzle at a time. Yeah, it's quite an aggressive uh, delivery system as well. That uh, that claw that comes out and just grabs the picture off him. It is. It's just a waste of man hours. Why? If they had a conveyor belt at the back feeding the men, <laughs> wouldn't need Ted. No, that's, that's one. True. That's one salary down. I mean, he's a, <laughs> he's a. He's a foreman. He's probably on. I mean, was this the eighties? So probably wouldn't have been say. Let's say around fourteen to fifteen thousand. You know, today's standards probably about twenty six to twenty eight. Um, this denim denim boy, whatever his name is, that is oh god, Roy. Roy. 
He's the one with the most Roy-like voice as well, isn't he? Roy can hear voice. I suppose that makes sense. But at that point, they were just saying, and now you're voicing Roy. And he went, oh, brilliant, I'd have to try. That's me. That's my name. <laughs> is he, when he's doing Ted's voice, is he doing like a Bruce Forsyth impression? Couple of Bertha. That is what I think, because the design is, is very sort of... Do you know, I didn't even make that connection. Bruce Forsyth, because there was a sitcom, I think, in the 80s with Bruce Forsyth as like a supermarket manager, or am I making that oh, up? God, there might have been. I've, I, it doesn't ring any bells with me. But... Okay, maybe I made that up. But, Come on, that Burford, that must be round. <laughs> but that's what, that's what I, I think now, watching this, is that, that he is almost, he, he's doing a Forsyth. Do you know what? I can't unsee Bruce Forsyth now. You've ruined birth. <laughs> you said about me ruining Bertha for you, but you've ruined it for me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why's Bertha got teeth? I don't know, but that's another one of those little designs that is just really. It's just quite cool when you see things coming out and the teeth just flat up to show the box coming through. <laughs> yeah. What, These are what? not good descriptive terms. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, there you go, the finger. Yeah, the yeah. pensive finger. Just, and he's What's punched that? his fist there. He punched his hand, sorry. And then she does this with the, yeah. Yeah. They're just showing off, aren't they? They are. Yeah, I don't know, know what size these puppets must have been. Oh, just, I don't know. I was going to give you an answer then. I don't know. <laughs> no. Ten inches. That's good enough. I don't know. Why not? What I, what I love about this as well is that she keeps, a bit earlier on, the blonde one, Flo, whichever, she's kind of taking the puzzles and they're falling apart. Mm. Oh no, yeah, which piece was it? Well, there's about, what, 12 pieces? Each <laughs> 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 puzzle. Just put it back together. But this, this machine, so basically you can type in anything and Bertha can make anything, providing she has the blueprints. Pretty much. It's kind of what's suggested later on in the episode. Well, when they work out what she has to do, she can always churn the goods out. Always churn the goods out. They can depend upon her. I should have listened more closely <laughs> during the opening credits. I would have answered my own question. <laughs> they go cross-eyed a lot as well, don't they? I think that's the, the closeness of the eyes. Is Why did he just, he just sniff to the pencil? I think he's supposed to have licked it. That's the only thing, really, is the mouths don't move. So they're these perpetual smiles, pretty much. Maybe he did a Mr. Thorne. Maybe he did. Now I have to explain that. <laughs> Mr. Thorne. <laughs> Mr. Thorne was our French teacher in school. Uh, we both attended the same, same school, even though it was you know, two years apart. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, he would, he would kind of rub the chalk off the chalkboard with his fingers. <laughs> then he would place the fingers down the back of his trousers while he was thinking near his anal hole <laughs> and then bring them back up to his face and then sniff them. Although he wasn't overtly sniffing them, but it looked like he was sniffing his chalky bum fingers. <laughs> this, was, this was only ever in the lessons that you had with him because I never saw him do that. He definitely did it at least once. <laughs> at least once. At least once and I clocked it and then maybe exaggerated it. <laughs> he did it all the time. Now, is it wrong that Miss McClackety is quite hot? Uh, is that wrong yes. that I think that? <laughs> I'm not going to go along with you on this one. No, no. I, I think that's weird. Okay. What if she sort of let her hair down? No, the tea lady. <laughs> I butter her bread. I don't know. I can't think of any. Now, I really thought they were going to go down the ghost route with this. I was yeah. quite surprised they didn't. Uh, it's very obvious that their puppets are not underneath the uh, sheets yeah. until they really have to be as well. Um, like, I really thought that the, the tea lady was going to get scared because they were ghosts. That's what I. That would have added a, another sort of subplot to uh, to what is already quite a busy episode. It is busy. It's plot heavy. Yeah. It is plot heavy. Yeah. But no, it really surprised on. me because I did think, oh, here we go. Ghost storyline, but they didn't do it. Nell and or Flo doesn't really know how jigsaws work there. <laughs> She's just trying to no. jam two together in midair. They're all a bit dense, really. I mean, this this should have been an easy... What, what, again, what a waste of man hours. It is. Yeah, I mean, where's, but then, where's the site, the, the, the main foreman, the guy with the bowler hat? Uh, he appears now, doesn't he, and basically tells them to stop pissing about and uh, get back to work. Hello there, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> 
we made 40 puzzles today, now we put them all together, wasting time. But again, this is a good showcase of Roy Kinnear's different accents, though, because he does quite a good convincing Scottish accent for Mr. Duncan. That is true. Mr. Duncan, that's yeah. it. See that little, little so moustache scratch and a little twitch? Is... But what does he do? What's his role? He's the site foreman. But what? He's not doing anything. He strolls around, looking important in a bowler hat and a... I don't know, what's that? It's not a tweed suit, is it? What is he? Well, yeah, it's like a check tweed suit. Yeah. He's and, got no uh, purpose. Ted Ted should be fulfilling both of these roles. Really. I suppose he should, yeah. I Although mean, Ted's just the operator of Bertha, isn't he? He just Is that where he wears like a lab coat? Yeah, he's the machine operator. According to the uh <laughs> the website I have up in the background. <laughs> Alright, okay. So what's this guy's purpose? Just to design stuff. He's the toy designer, that's Mr. Sprott. But they're not always making toys, are they? Do they always make toys? Uh, uh, it describes on again this uh, possibly reliable site. It describes Bertha as a toy making machine. This this factory just would have gone under so quickly because to have an on site toy two on site toy designers. Well, no, she's just an assistant toy designer, isn't she? But then she designs one well, now. She Mr. designs Sprite. Reggie, not Reggie. What's Tom? Tom? Robbie, Tom. Tom. Yeah, nothing like what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sprite is a bit of an asshole there as well because he says. Like about making his painting machine, and she says, "Can I have a go?" And he says, "Yes, but mine will work." And then walks away. <laughs> like yours won't. Mine will work. You're just an assistant. Women don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> but look, what? swinging legs as well. Little extra uh, sort of details that don't really need to be happening. But just I didn't, see, I didn't remember there being songs in Bath. No, I didn't. I didn't either. I mean, this isn't much of a song, admittedly, but no. it is a song nonetheless. It's about my level. And I quite like all the little blueprints and things on the walls in the background. Like the set design is such a huge thing that it sort of almost goes unnoticed because it's so yeah. clever. Hang on a minute. So she's designing Tom. Yeah. Yeah, there are blueprints for something very similar behind her head now. Maybe she's been thinking about it for a long time. And, and no, I think, Mr. I think Mr. Sprott designed it. She's just trying to take credit for it. <laughs> Oh, I like to think it was the other way around, that Mr. Sprott was just just dismissive of her efforts. and uh... I think Mr. Sprott should maybe look at her you know, as an employee and see if she can really be trusted. Mm. She Classic. does sort of go behind his back as well. She just goes and asks him to make Tom without really checking with anybody else. Yeah, she's like the Thomas Edison <laughs> of this group, just taking other people's ideas and crapping all over them and taking the credit. <laughs> when they didn't really invent anything. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial. That's Controversial. Uh, that's what you get with us on well, this. Well I'm podcast. Thomas Edison. I'm gonna Oh that's a good idea. I'll make it look like it was all me. Oh, <laughs> I'll destroy them by the patterns. So she's Flo. She's Flo. It's uh, just been confirmed by She's done it again. Oh the Gosh, she's so annoying. Stop touching the puzzles. I said, stop touching the puzzles. I mean, yeah, we want them all broken up in a box anyway, but, you know. Do you think you could get Bertha to make this? Do you know what Roy's surname is in this? Kinnear? No, Roy Willing. Kafar. It's, it's a little bit on the nose. Um, Roy what? Willing. Roy Willing? Mm. Not very good, is it? No. What's Ted's surname? Turner. Ted Turner. Which, isn't he, yeah, isn't, he's an executive or something. Isn't he, what does he do? Isn't he like a TV executive in the States? I think so. I think so, yeah. Something like Ted Turner. He's been referenced on Family Guy. That's my only point of reference <laughs> for that name, Ted Turner. It does sound familiar, yeah. What's um, what's Mr. Sprott's surname? Sprott. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't what's, have a first name, though. Does he not? No. Well, not on, oh. this, on this site, and that's the only one I can be bothered to look at. Do you know what? This painting machine is actually really rather brilliant. I was quite it's, impressed. It's very good. I thought that I would... Well, no, I wouldn't pay good money for it, but I would happily use one. Apart from it's a lack of an off switch, uh, as we find out in a minute. Oh, that's true. And also it's inability to do doors, even though yeah. you can quite easily paint around a window. <laughs> yeah. Oh, racist stereotype character. It's, it, it verges on racism. I don't think it quite qualifies as being racist, but it's just uncomfortable. Um, yeah, I don't know why. So how... If it manages to paint round the window, why would it do that? It wouldn't, would it? Because it has to do that for the comedy element of getting a painty moustache on Mr Duncan. Comedy? Yeah. Element? 
Yeah. Racism? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Without the sound up, it looked like Mr. Sprouts doing some sort of um, mind reading motion. <laughs> See, I like just now when he adjusted his tie. That was another really cool sort of. I don't know the animation on it. I, I keep saying the same thing, but it's it really is brilliant. In in many ways, um, the way they use Bertha is reminiscent of uh, like a reverse human centipede, isn't it? Because they're shoving things up her ass, <laughs> and they're coming out of her mouth. It starts that... reverse of feed her from the centipede. It's, it's not exactly the reverse of that. <laughs> no, all right. well, yeah, all right. It's not exactly the reverse of that, but it is almost the reverse of that. <laughs> I'm so glad I've never seen the human centipede. Colonic in the gate, her. <laughs> it's... Yeah, don't ever watch the human centipede. It's not at ent- all terrifying, but it is a load of shit. <laughs> in several ways, I imagine. Yes, when yeah, that bit in particular is pretty disgusting. <laughs> well, you see anything because um, the mouth is sewn to the anus, so you don't really see anything. So it's fine. If I was in a human centipede, I definitely want to be at the front. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> if if I had to be, if I had to be have an extremity sewn onto another human being. <laughs> <laughs> it would definitely be your anus onto their definitely mouth. Definitely be my anus onto their mouth. That is how I want to go. <laughs> well, I'll definitely write that down for write it down. future reference. I can't hear you writing it down. Write it down. I'll remember. And that's the end of Bertha. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's a short show, obviously. Um, it's a bit, when you think about it, though, Bertha is, is basically sentient, so it, it's a good job that she goes along with, with what is basically slave labour, because I doubt they pay her. What could you no, pay her? She's a big a machine. Robot. Yeah. But she's but she's alive. She's alive enough to know that she she wants to keep those jigsaw puzzle pieces for some reason. I didn't really get why she was keeping them. She's making a whole another one to keep. <laughs> to feed Because <laughs> <them. laughs> that's what robots like. Jigsaw robots puzzles. love jigsaws. That's I... the overarching theme of Blade Runner. <laughs> and Bertha. And Bertha. I, no, I really liked that. That was it's it's gentle. It's uh, it's well made. It's it's very high quality. Um, it is. But what makes me sad is that on the uh, on the thumbs up on YouTube, there are no thumbs up or thumbs down. So people don't care either way. <laughs> yeah, that is that is worse. Almost worse than a thumbs down, isn't it? I'm gonna like it. Oh, good. thumbs up, thumbs up from too much jam slash when my windows were bigger. I have to log in to do that, and I don't think I know what my password is. If uh, anyone's looking for the video, it's been uploaded by Cat Books CBBS, <laughs> <laughs> who has three thousand and ninety-nine subscribers, three thousand and ninety-eight more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Cat Books CBBS. Well done, Cat Books CBBS. What are you doing right? <laughs> <laughs> showing things like Bertha without like, talking over them and ruining it <laughs> I know so you know I know we normally say that at the end but go and subscribe to our YouTube channel you can listen yeah. to this again <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't you want to do that uh, so um, so you didn't fancy any of those puppets then at all <laughs> <laughs> oh Martin no <laughs> no I mean nothing nothing stirred not, not even, not even when Panjid was on the screen. No, no. Okay, but just for the puppet reason, not for no other reason. <laughs> um, oh, okay, it's but good no, to I clarify. can't. Yeah, I thought I'd better clarify that. Um, uh, no, I, I can't <laughs> see the attraction. Maybe there... if they had their, they were sewn together in a <laughs> puppet centipede, maybe then. <laughs> What would that be then? Nell, Flo, and uh, and Roy. Roy would be at the front because in the film the man is at the front and the two women, and the one in the middle dies. Oh. Um, and then they have Seems to like... climb some stairs on their knees because they've had their art uh, not arteries, their um, tendons or something severed, so they can't unbend is, their knees. So they have to this, crawl everywhere. Is this before or after the middle one dies that they're climbing stairs? Uh, I think it's before. Okay. Because they're trying to be... escape. That would be difficult, wouldn't it? Imagine like lump with the front front one and the back one having yeah. to carry the weight of the middle one. I don't think that would work. No, but that's the, the worst part of the film for me is that bit where they're trying to climb the stairs because I know that the tendons have been severed, 
some kind of element. That made me feel more uncomfortable than the mouth crap. <laughs> How many podcasts can you say? You start talking about Bertha, a children's TV show, and then segue somehow into the human centipede. <laughs> segue, I mean, segue somewhat seamlessly. I don't seamlessly know really into the human centipede. How that worked. Even, even I think listening back to this, it will be difficult to find out how that happened. I know. I um, I apologise. <laughs> Was there a scrappy do in that episode? <laughs> it's early to tell, but I think Tom would probably be it. Oh, it's a shame because he doesn't look that annoying. He's and he's quite helpful. Oh, I'm sure he's helpful. I mean, Scrappy Doo thinks he's being helpful. I uh, see. I I thought you would have said Roy. No. No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't, and I didn't. So wash your mouth out. Oh, I, I will. I didn't I will have to. to. I will have to. And uh, I don't think I had a favourite character, although something about the cut of Ted's uh, jib, mm. I quite liked. I um, I did like Miss McClackety. I know you did. <laughs> I heard the ping of your pantalastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think as a kid. Um, it, <laughs> Hang on! I, no, no, I'm going back. I'm just trying to keep it, uh, trying to take it back to clean levels. I think keep I did used to like, I did used to like Tom because I always used to think that would be quite a cool toy in its own right as well. A little Tom it would have been one toy. It? They all would have been, to be honest. It's it's, yeah. it's a it's a nice little show. Yeah, um, and there is something something I really do like about um, stop motion because most mm. things these days we touched on it before um, that most. Kid shows these days are probably mostly CG, mm. um, and so it's really nice when you see a show that is stop motion um, with that level of detail and care going into it as well. Because I don't yeah. know how you know for a fifteen-minute show or whatever that was, it was about fifteen minutes, wasn't it? About that yeah, about that yeah. must have taken a long time. Um, well, yeah, to, if you think of what do. twenty-four frames a second, and then you know. So that's twenty four still images for every second of film. It's it's a lot. I mean, I've I've done a few stop motion animations in my time, but <laughs> God, I, I get so got so bored so quickly that they would jump in frames quite a lot. Well, I <laughs> did um, as as you know, I did um, a media and animation course at college, and mm. what happens on a media and animation course is everybody starts the year thinking they're going to make the next Wallace and Gromit, and yeah. after the first project, everyone does live action video. Apart from yeah. like maybe one or two loners who are quite happy to shut themselves away in a room for six months and, and yes. work on sort of a magnum opus of, uh, yeah. of stop motion animation. I mean, we did um, like a, even just like a, a simple moonscape, something that three or four of us all did. We, we sort of made like a planetscape. We made a little alien <coughs> and animated that. And towards the end of that project, uh, I, I don't think I was in the room at the time, but uh, they the, the other guys just got bored and started just like, you know, holding down the... Um, the, the trigger for the the shutter, so they were mm. just like just wasting the rest of the film. Um, it's it's. I mean, I've I've got the um, the eye stop motion app mm. um, on the iPad. I keep meaning to do something. Just that silly little ideas I've had, but just a lot of bother, isn't it? <laughs> but it is brilliant. And, and and my tutor on that course uh, had worked on Fireman Sam as well, which was, uh, that wasn't Iverwood, was it? That was completely different, but... Um, no, that was um, similar. I, um, some Welsh person. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, if anybody's not familiar with Fireman Sam, it's the adventure, the stop-motion adventures of a Welsh fireman uh, in a village where only one person starts fires, and it's the ginger child who's always in trouble. Naughty Norman face! But yeah, so so it's... Um, I, I do... I do have a lot of respect for anybody who can can make good stop motion animation because um, yeah, definitely it's very hard and and just like throwing in the little touches and everything. Uh, it sort of it seems to be my only point, but it's, <laughs> it's it's very very good and it's gentle and I think it holds up today because I, I don't see why it wouldn't. There's nothing in that that you couldn't show to a child and and hopefully no. they would enjoy it. You know, no, I mean my my two loved stop motion stuff I mean the, the one that came into my head which was more recent I mean we're talking around 2000 oh excuse me yawning how how very unprofessional during the podcast <laughs> um, uh, about 2006 7 I guess uh, was Little Red Tractor do you remember oh, that one I've tour? heard of it I mean uh, Joe he was very very obsessed with that it was a really beautifully done kind of very British 
uh, stop motion animation about you know this farmer who's got a very old fashioned little red tractor and then his um kind of competition another farmer who had kind of uh, a more modern blue tractor and it's it's, it's kind of between them kind of trying to or the, the the modern farm trying to up you know mm-hmm. um one up and ship over over i think it was stan was the one in the red one but yeah it's just really nice animation how um, old was uh, was joe when he was watching that about two okay two i think we had all the books and um i would i would record off of the uh, off of the tv and then create dvds with menus and things when I had time to do things like that <laughs> and create his own DVDs with menus and episode lists and all of that kind of thing um, because he loved it so much but yeah it's just something great about stop motion that's why I love the Ardman films and um, I suppose the other modern equivalent for something like Postman Pat or Bertha is would have been Fire sorry Bob the Builder I was going to say Fireman Sam again then but Bob yeah. the Builder was is sort of big but there's it's not got quite as much Charm, uh, charm, or mm. I don't know. Maybe that's just a personal nostalgia thing, but it yeah, could be, couldn't it? I mean, it, you know, we do look back on these things with those tinted my, spectacles. My niece loved um, Bob the Builder when she she would have probably been about two or three as well. And um, no, hang on, no, she probably loved Wendy. Yeah, not Bob the Builder. She just liked watching the the show. I don't know if who her favourite was. Um, probably <laughs> the cat. can't be builders. <laughs> um, of course they can. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, the, the the thing in Bob the Builder is that Wendy is the one doing all the work, and Bob just sort of stands around and, and and orders people to do stuff. And Wendy's the only one you actually see doing any bloody work. Bloody as, far as I could tell. Thing is, if you had um, living machinery, you wouldn't have yeah. to do things like Handy Manny with his living tools. I mean, what does he do? Nothing. It's it's the same sort of problem. It's the same as, show. <laughs> the same problem as Bertha has, isn't it? Really, you've got these these. Things which are alive and have their own personalities, and they're sort of designed to just work for humans, and they're supposed yeah. to be happy with it. But it'd be like Terminator. They'll just revolt and <laughs> there's, a the show. <laughs> there's a show. That would be a great show. Twenty years on, Bertha is creating Terminators. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> oh God! Do you know what? I would. That would be brilliant. I'd watch that. I'd watch the that resistance as well. formed of Ted and Roy. Or the Roy has got like a massive scar on his face. He's, old, he's really the leader cool. of the resistance. <laughs> he's a Terminator. It's kind of but oh, that might be something we have to try and knock up. <laughs> oh dear. Sky Possibly nuts. when this comes to be on video as well on YouTube. Maybe <laughs> we'll have that knocked up to go Skynet, with Skynet. Lovely Skynet. You're a lovely machine. <laughs> <laughs> we all bow down to your superior power. All hell, oh. Skynet. It's a different <laughs> theme song. <laughs> it's a very different theme song. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a worrying thought, isn't it? It is. Um, yeah, I, I think I've sort of run out of things to say. Really, I don't know if you've got any any final thoughts about Bertha. No, I've got a few more about the human centipede. Okay, well maybe we'll, <laughs> no. maybe, maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do a human centipede uh, podcast, yeah. and we'll see if we end up talking about Bertha on that. I think this is the natural evolution of any conversation. It's it's the, it's a circle, isn't it, of of conversation? It'll always come back. One will lead to the other. Yeah, it'll always come back to the human centipede. The first sequence. This is not the second sequence or the imminent third sequence or oh final God, sequence. They're doing a third one. They are doing a third one with quite a few people sewn together, I believe. Isn't the second one? Isn't it sort of like breaking the fourth wall? It's like he watched the first film and tried to re- the film. Yeah, something like yeah. that. I've not seen the second one. No, I, I mean the first one is awful, terrible. So is the third one going to be somebody who's seen the sequel? Oh, I don't know. I it's don't unnecessary. Know. It's unnecessary that it's being made. It's unnecessary that the second one was made, and it's unnecessary that the first one was made. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not good. It was kind of the only reason I watched it. I can't believe we going back to this. The only reason <laughs> I watched it was through curiosity because such a fuss was made. And I thought, well, I've got to make up my own mind whether it's shocking or not. And it's not shocking, it's just stupid. But apart from that bit where he's, they're going up the stairs, which is the only bit that I felt, ooh, 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 don't like it. Yeah, you, so your I'm, opinion was good enough for me. I just went with what you said and thought, I don't need to watch that. No. It's, no, it's a stupid film. Really stupid. Although, Feed her! Well, that is funny <laughs> when he says that. <laughs> Terminator 6, Bertha's Revenge, will be a good film. 
It'll be better than Terminator Genesis anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, if you um, have enjoyed what you heard, you might not. You may have. Who knows? Um, but we've also got a shared Twitter feed, which stuff goes up on now and again, um, at Spread the Whimsy, so you can follow what we're up to on there. And you can also go and like us on Facebook, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash too much dot jam. Uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes and you haven't subscribed, why not? Please click subscribe. Uh, it All you've got to do is click. Makes it that much easier to get next week's episode. You don't have to do anything. It'll just instantly download. Uh, please uh, also, Mark did mention it earlier, but please subscribe to the YouTube channel because, um, you know, one subscriber does look a bit rubbish. So you know, Especially when it's me. <laughs> And, you know, I did say at the beginning of the podcast that I'm never going to let you down. So, hey, how about some reciprocation a, on that? That's a promise. That's a promise. I'm never going to let you down. I'm never going to run around because running is not my thing. <laughs> so stop letting us down and subscribe to both uh, our YouTube channel and our iTunes uh, feed or whatever you call it. And uh, if you have the time, just, you know, write a review. Uh, if, uh, if Even if you hated it, just write us a quick review. Even uh, if you hate it, we don't mind. It'll amuse me. Uh, a bad reviews uh, are probably going to be better to read in many ways. Yeah, probably. So yeah. I'll, I'll enjoy either. But uh, yeah, so um, take some Just time to to look at some other stuff we've done as well. And uh, yeah, subscribe and rate and review. It's and, all um, at least as funny as this was. Exactly. To take away what you want from that. <laughs> this 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 is your base level. <laughs> yeah. Of funny, and uh, yeah, it, it it's it's at least this good. So at least it's good. So what have you got to lose? <laughs> really, just do it. But um, so yeah, hopefully you'll uh, you'll tune in again next week, or if you've subscribed, this uh, or this podcast will appear next week. Uh, well, not this one, but next week's one will appear <laughs> next week automatically for you, and uh, you can uh, you can lose another half an hour or so of your time listening to us again. Yeah, well, it'll be fun for you. So uh, hopefully you'll hear us next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Then cheerio. Bye bye.